title of the message tonight is A Biblical View of Addiction. A Biblical View of Addiction. Now, Sundays on the bulletin, I usually put in there, uh, and if you have Facebook, you might read it on there as well. I usually put in the, what the title is in advance. And I think the title was something like What an Addict Needs or something like that. And I wasn't quite sure where I was going with it. <clears throat> but I found out it's a kind of a chore to decide what the Bible says about addiction. You know, I looked at various things and thought about different different things and try to say, what does the Bible say about addiction and what are some of the examples? And maybe through your mind right now, you might be thinking of a couple examples. If you think of some things in the Bible that I don't hit on tonight, please tell me afterwards what, what you were thinking on your uh, on your mind. So I've been studying a lot about uh, 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 about YouTube and making YouTube videos and everything. So I started to say, if, if you have something to share, just leave a, leave something, leave a message in the comments below. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <clears throat> but seriously, I want, I want your input on that because, uh, uh, I had a hard time and I even shared on Facebook. I said, if anybody, uh, you know, I asked the people, you know, if they had any addictions, strange addictions, right? Anybody know there, I've never seen it, but I guess there's a show on TV called Strange Addictions, and I, I looked in a little bit because I was just looking up strange things that people do, and there's some weird stuff. They eat like the uh, eat like the foam from their mattresses and their their couches, and and uh, somebody eats toilet paper. I saw that, you know. Um, just there's just some weird stuff, and so uh, so I asked about that. I got a lot of. Uh, Feedback, biting fingernails is a big habit people have, or or addiction. And uh, uh, somebody said, uh, uh, "Oh, let me think. I, I can't remember the name of it, but there's something where you tend to pull your hair. I think they use the same name for like scratching. You ever see someone just constantly scratching, and they got like scars all over their body because they just got this this habit or addiction. Now I'm going to go back and forth a little bit on habit and addiction because. Uh, uh, it's really hard to separate the two. And I just and I read an article from somebody supposed to be an expert in that from today's, you know, psychiatrist, and they're supposed to be an expert on that, and they said it's really hard to tell the difference, but then they began to give their explanation of what the difference was, and I'm thinking, yeah, but from a biblical point of view, you can't find that in the Bible, and I'm trying to preach what the Bible says, not man's opinion, right? But uh but I'm look I'm just thinking about addictions, okay? Because somebody said to me a while back uh, you know, what do you think about, you know, are there some verses you can share with me about addiction? They said, or better yet, can you maybe preach a message sometime on addiction? Now, I actually did once before, uh, it was, but it was about being addicted to the ministry, which I'm, of course, going to bring that up again. And I just tried to think, rack my brain, what did I preach? And I can't remember. So if I can't remember what I preached, I'm guessing nobody else can remember. So it's not going to hurt if I say some of the same things, <laughs> some of the same things again. But uh, but the, the about addiction, so I said, well, yeah, I'd love to do that. This was a long time ago, and it's been a while to actually get to a point where I uh, had the opportunity to, to preach on it. But yeah, I began to look at what are addictions? Like, what could this person be meaning by that? Usually we think of substance abuse, right? But there's a lot of things that are addictive. And so, like I mentioned this word that I can't remember, but it means like scratching yourself or like pulling hair. People just pull their hair all the time. This guy said his thing is pull his eyebrows. And he said it started whenever he was nervous or something like that. There was something going on in his life. He was nervous. And so he began doing it. And then he just never could quit doing it. You know, same thing. People bite their nails. Uh, I'm, I'm trying really hard not to share it, my, my, my family's uh, <laughs> little habits. But my wife, uh, I will share this one that she used to bite her nails a lot. I mean, all, most of her life. But she says she remembers when she started doing that, uh, she started doing a lot of music competitions in school. And so she was, you know, just started biting her nails. It was kind of a nervous response. And then it just kept with her. You know, the only exception is every time she's pregnant with a boy, she, for some reason, had no desire to bite her fingernails. That seems weird. But uh, and let me say this, too, as kind of a disclaimer. Look, there are things about the, the mind and the behaviors, chemical imba imbalances and stuff. I don't know anything about. I can't deal with that. And it's probably not going to come up that much in this message. But when I think about addictions and habits and I try to compare what the Bible says, it might be just maybe a little different than, uh, than what you might think. But I, first, I, what I often start, if I'm doing something topical like that that has to do with a certain subject, certain word, what I like to do is just look at what the dictionary says about that. So I was like, okay, what does the dictionary say about addiction? Pri primarily, I like to go way back. 
you know, the origins of the word. I look up the etymology and all. And, and in, uh, Web, by, by 1828, Webster said this. In 1828, he said, uh, Addict is... Uh, I'm trying to skip some of the dictionary verbiage. Let's see here. To apply oneself habitually to devote time and attention to customary or constant practice, sometimes in a good sense. And then it quotes my favorite verse, 1 Corinthians 16, 15. They have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints, more usually in a bad sense, to follow customary or devote by habitual practicing that which is ill, as a man is addicted to intemperance. Now, you see there, that sounds like a habit to me. You know, usually you say addict, you think somebody, here's what I hear all the time. Well, you know, my father was a drunk, right? And so he has this like chemical imbalance. And then I'll hear people even say this, it's genetic. It passes down and they're passing some things down to you. And so, hey, if, you're, if your father was an alcoholic, well, you're likely to be an alcoholic. Look, I can't prove that. And if any psychiatrist says that they believe that to be the case, all I can say is I'm just going to look at what the Bible says. And if, the, if that is that in there in the Bible, and I'm going to tell you this, I don't see it. Not saying it's not true. I'm just saying I don't see it. A lot of what we call addictions are just somebody started a habit. They formed a habit, right? And now it's become something that's kind of controlled them. They have devoted themselves to it. Now, the word addict is in the Bible. Only The word addict isn't, but the word addiction uh, or addicted is. That's that one verse. They addicted themselves to the uh, ministry of the saints. But other than that, that word's not in the Bible. So you have to say, okay, by that definition, what could we be talking about? What are some words that are in the Bible? And here are some words you get. Devotion. Okay, well, that's, that's part of the definition there. Devotion. So what's the Bible say about devotion? Let's look at a couple verses here. Leviticus 27. Leviticus 27 seems like a weird uh, use of the word, maybe, for, for this, but... He's talking about, in this case, he's talking about giving uh, something that they've devoted to the Lord. A uh, tithe, uh, uh, offering of some sort, sacrifice. And in this context, he's talking about that. And it's called a devotion. Leviticus 27, verse 28. Notwithstanding, no devoted thing that a man shall devote unto the Lord of all that he hath, both of man and beast, and of the field of his possession shall be sold or redeemed. It's talking about the year of the Jubilee. Every devoted thing is most holy unto the Lord. None devoted which shall be devoted of men shall be redeemed, but, sh uh, but shall surely be put to death. So look, if you've devoted that cattle, you know, that ox or whatever to be put to death, you've devoted uh, something, then, then look, it's got a destination, right? And so uh, that's the word that's used for devotion. This is devoted to something. It's given to this purpose. It's given over to this purpose. And so you can look at a few other places. Look at Acts 17. Acts 17. Paul goes to... Uh, uh, what's the name of that place? <laughs> Acts 17. I'll just read it. No, it's the uh, place where they had the idols. Mars Hill, yeah. Acts, Athens, somebody else said, you're, you're both right. <laughs> you both get a sticker. Acts 17, verse 16. Now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Now, that's kind of like the definition of addiction, something that is habitual, something that they're wholly given to, right? In this case, they were wholly given to idolatry, and, uh, and let's, let's keep reading. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons, all right, these people that had devoted themselves to this, and in the market uh, daily with them that met with him, then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him, and some said, what will this babbler say? Others uh, other some, he seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him unto the Areopagus, uh, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof uh, thou speakest is. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears, 
we would know, therefore, that these, what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent uh, their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new things. That's devotion. <laughs> these people have, had made it a practice or a habit to seek new things. They wanted to learn. They wanted to know about uh, the different gods and all this kind of stuff. They had devoted themselves to that. They had given themselves wholly to idolatry meaning they were worshiping all these gods, but not the true God, right? That's, that's, so they had addicted themselves, in a manner of speaking, to uh, false gods or whatever, to, to learning even. And that makes me think this. I didn't write it in my notes, but it thinks, makes me think about Solomon. You know, if I had to find one person in the Bible that I could say, you know, this was a good example of someone in the Bible who had addictive, uh, addictive nature, it had to be Solomon. Right. Solomon, I mean, he was addicted to women, right? A thousand wives. We're talking about that thinking, you know, how, what, his, his life had to be totally given to, to taking care of these different wives, you know, concubines and all. And not only that, but you read and, the, and he just, he was, he got addicted to collecting gold and all these different types of things and then making the shields and all this beautiful thing. There seemed to be some kind of addiction in there that he, that he wanted to get this and he wanted to display all that he had. And that wasn't enough. So what did he do? He addicted himself to knowledge. Man, he went after it. He went hardcore after whatever it was that he was wanting to study. I want to study about trees. I want to study about uh, madness, you know, probably kind of like what we would think today of psychi psychiatry. He just wanted to give himself to learning about madness and, and, and folly and all this kind of stuff and entertainment. Most of America's given themselves and uh, wholly to entertainment, right? They're addicted to entertainment. I find myself very much addicted to knowing, you know, being in, in tune with what's going on and, 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 I mean, to some degree <laughs> with what I want to be in tune to and uh, looking up, you know, uh, what does that word mean? I can look it up real fast. Isn't that amazing? Right? So if you're not careful, you just have this desire uh, to do that and you start giving yourself over to, man, I got to be entertained. I got to have something going on. I have to know, uh, you know, uh, more information. This is the information age, right? They, they call it. And so people can get addicted to that. There's a lot of things that we can be given over to. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 3, chapter 3, and verse 3. 1 Timothy 3, 3. Obviously, a qualification for a pastor or bishop or an elder, or whatever you want to call him, says this, not given to wine. Right? You can look at some of these other things and say, look, this is not a guy, he's temperate, and, and he's not a guy that's just given over to these different types of addictions uh, that are bad addictions, right? No, not given to wine. Titus 1.7 says the same thing. Let's go over to Titus. One seven four bishop must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine. No striker, not given to filthy lucre, right? So you see, there's a, he's not just his he's he hasn't set his devotion on, you know, fulfilling the flesh with alcohol. He hasn't set his devotion on filling the flesh with filthy lucre. You know, what can I go after? I got to get more money. I got to find. I mean, there are guys in the ministry who are I would say good guys. But they've gotten into the flesh where it just seems like all they think about is, you know, how can we bring in more money? You know, how can we build this, uh, you know, this school or this building or all these kinds of things that they have to have? And in order to have that, they need money. So they've actually addicted themselves to lucre. Right? And that's a dangerous thing uh, to do. Uh, and so, but here's the thing. There are a lot of things. Uh, let's look at I, I, one more. Isaiah 47. Isaiah 47. And look at verse 8. <clears throat> Isaiah 47, verse 8. Therefore hear now this, thou that art given to pleasures, that dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thy heart, I am, and none else beside me, I shall now sit as a widow, uh, shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. So these people were lifted up in pride, and it says they live their life given to pleasure, right? And so uh, they obviously... 
given to alcohol, given to filthy lucre, given to pleasure. We would call somebody maybe covetous, right? Covetous, they're just, their heart's going after uh, certain things, and that's what they want to do. These are all things that could be called addictions. Now, the first point I want to make tonight, that was all introduction, but the first point I want to make is this. You may have already figured this out. We all have addictions. Got nobody can tell me, well, I'm just not. Now, I, I've said this a lot, and I believe it's true. I feel like I have maybe more than some people of an addictive nature. I've heard that a lot. I've said that. I've even said this. Man, I'm glad I never took one sip of alcohol because I'm such an, I have such an addictive personality that I probably would have become a drunk, right? But I thought about that a little bit, and I thought, well, I mean, that's kind of true for everybody because everybody's an addict, or can be an addict. Everybody's addicted to something. I could say, well, I'm more addicted to certain things, but somebody else might not be addicted to those same things I am, but there's something in their life that they're addicted to. Everybody's got addictions. Everybody is human and has a addictive nature. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be attempted above that ye are able, but will with that temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Now, that temptation there could, could mean a lot of things. It could mean just trials that come in your life, uh, you know, burdens, hardships, whatever, physical ailments. It also could be, you know, your addictive nature. It could be thorns in the flesh. It could be certain things. But God says, look, I, you, you, what you have is common to man. It's common. Other people have dealt with the same thing. And it doesn't matter if we're talking about People who have some kind of a mental ailment, some mental condition. I'm going to talk a little bit about that here in a minute. But again, I can't speak as an expert on that situation. I can't say, the fa I know for a fact that there are some people that they do things that are, that are out of their control. There is no way to, for them to control it. But for the most part, most people that are dealing with addictions, I think they can control it, you know, if they wanted to, bad enough. I mean, if you looked at somebody and you said, look, one of the most addictive things I've ever seen somebody with is tobacco. And from what I understand, I've never done it. I've never done smoking, chewing, nothing like that. But what I understand is chewing, I've heard some people say, is even harder to quit than, than smoking, right? But I bet if somebody, you know, got into a relationship and their spouse was like, hey, you know, I don't ever want to see you doing that. And they said, okay, I'll never do that. Even if they secretly have the addiction, I bet you in the presence of that person that they love, they can choose not to do it while they're with that person. <laughs> I bet you if the boss said, hey, if you get caught smoking on the job, you're fired. They can probably make it till break time without smoking, don't you think? <laughs> if somebody looked and said, all right, I tell you what, you got that addiction. You say, I can't control it. I can't help it. I just don't know what to do. I can't stop it. If they looked at him and said, I tell you what, I'll give you a million dollars if you don't do that for one year. Now, there are some people, unfortunately, that would still go back to their habit <laughs> because, because they just that's so important to them. But most people, I think, would be reasonable enough to, if they really know that something like that was the case, they could make themselves stop doing something. You know, I don't believe we're going to get up to heaven one day and God's going to show everybody our bad, <laughs> bad uh, you know, all the things that we've ever done in life or whatever. But like, if you really thought that he was going to do that, wouldn't you like be real careful <laughs> what you did? I think you have that ability. If they said, okay, everything you do for the next 24 hours is going to be broadcasted. Everybody in the world can see everything that you did. I bet you you could make yourself not do whatever that addiction is for 24 hours. So my point that I'm trying to make is that we can control our addictions. Don't let anyone say, like, it's just, I, just, I can't do anything. I've talked to you a little bit about this. The guy, one of my neighbors sits out in his porch, and he, and he flat out told me. I went to go try to be a help to him. And he said, my wife left me. He's talking about everything falling apart. Man, couldn't even remember his kids' names. And he's looking at this table right in front of him with a can of beer. And he's like, and this is the problem right here. He says, I can't quit, I can't quit drinking. He's like, if you could quit drinking, don't you think you could get all that stuff back? You know, and he just kind of got quiet for a minute. And I'm thinking, who in their right mind would say, you know, I give up everything for this? Alcohol. And I, and, and I want to, I kind of want to slap him <laughs> and say, look, you can give it up. It just, for whatever reason, it's not, it's not important enough to you to give it up, but you can give it up. You say, I don't know, maybe he's got some kind of problem. I don't know, I don't know, but I can't find anything in the Bible that says that there's some magic solution 
to quit doing those things that are bad for you, <laughs> right? But we all have addictions, okay? Uh, there's something uh, called Tourette syndrome. Everybody, anybody ever heard of that? Yeah. Okay, so there's little tics that people have. Some of them are motor, or some of them are vocal tics. And so, so what I mean by motor is somebody you'll see, uh, they'll just like twitch or something, you know, and, and it's just all the time. And you might first few times you see them do it, think, well, that's weird. What are they doing? After a while, you realize they can't. It's just kind of like it's becoming a, a ha habitual thing. There's this kid that used to come to some of our activities. Uh, VBS and stuff like that, and he would just stand in the back and just go every once in a while. And all the kids looked at him like, what is his problem, right? But it was like, it was something, I don't know if it was something that could be controlled or if there's some physical, you know, disability that he has to do it or whatever. But, you know, here's what I think. Somebody might have something in their mind or a chemical imbalance or something that causes them to do that to an extreme, but I think all of us have ticks. <laughs> All of us have certain things that we do, you know, I, I, I just did it. I have, a, I have a tendency, I don't want to tell you this because now every time, you're going to count how many times I do it while I'm preaching, but a lot of times after I'll say something, it's not even funny, but I go, <laughs> I heard myself, I, I've heard myself preach and I've been like, man, why do I do that? You listen to yourself preach, you'll find something, but why do I do that? <laughs> why do I, there's just certain things that we develop, habits, and we start doing them. You say, yeah, well, that's not an addiction. Well, there's a fine line between a habit and, a, and an addiction. But what I'm trying to show you is that there, we, can, we can just not think about something and we can begin to allow it to kind of control us, whether it just seems like something tiny that doesn't mean anything or something that is uh, severe. I talked about my strange addiction. I kind of got off that for a minute, but people have some weird addictions that they have. I, I, I thought about one person said something about they sniffed this doll's head like all throughout the day they would sniff that doll's head and you think well that's that's weird no th th but there are things that people just there's like they're just constantly there's a certain smell like they're addicted to you know some people like smelling people's hair <coughs> joe biden <laughs> smelling hair is there anything wrong with smelling somebody's hair well no but if you're around my daughter or my wife and you're coming up sniffing their hair that's going to be a problem right <laughs> But there's just, for whatever reason, they're like, I got to smell people's hair. I don't <laughs> There's some strange uh, addictions that people have. Uh, biting nails. I talked about the guy, you know, pulling his hair. Somebody said, uh, somebody said that they have a problem. And again, they use the name, the scientific name. I don't know the medical name, but they said they count things. Like maybe count how many steps it takes them to get. Anybody have, just curiosity, anybody do that to some degree? How about, uh, you know, I, I, I see again, but I think, I think maybe I don't have a severe problem with that, but there are certain things that are habitual. When I'm knocking on the door, soul winning, da, 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 da. I'm like, I've asked my kids that, how many knocks was that? <laughs> Cause in my mind, I was like, that was seven knocks, you know, da, 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 da. that was five. <laughs> When I run, I, now I developed this habit and I did it on purpose because I wanted to be able to keep track of how far I was running. And so when I run, I got this little thing where I would count my, uh, my steps. Not every single step, there's a certain way I do it, I can't explain it to you, but I would do that, that's one, that's two, and after I hit a, a hundred, I'm at a quarter mile. And that's seriously like, it's very accurate. And so I know my pace and I know everything and I can do that and I can tell you about how far I've gone. And I got, I had to make myself do that but I got to where every time I go running, even if I don't need to know how far I'm going, I, it would just become a habit. And I'm still thinking I could be listening and preach and I could be doing everything and I'm still counting off numbers in my head. But I don't feel like I have that, that problem, you know what I mean? But there are some people that just always count things. Some people that always do, uh, they're just all these different things that, are, that can be addictive. And like I said, I, sent, I notice it in myself. I believe everybody has it. Everybody has a little bit of OCD. I watched this thing, uh, uh, a long time ago, I started the cleaning business, and so I was kind of studying a little bit about cleaning and and uh, and how to how to do it most efficiently. And and I went into some nasty places because I went into rental houses after they uh, change hands, you know. And and people leave some nasty stuff <laughs> behind. I mean, I'm talking about. I remember the uh, paper towel or what do you call you know where you put your towel, the towel rack. Uh, I remember just cleaning it. I'm just polishing it, and it fell off the place. And these drug needles slid slid out of there i mean this was the kind of apartments that i was cleaning and uh and i remember so i watched this uh something a show that came out of uh, britain 
And uh, it was about these people that had disgusting houses, and these ladies would go in and they would clean it. Now they had a help; they had a crew that would help them do it. But they'd go in there and show how you can clean with like, you know, vinegar and and all these like natural products and all this kind of stuff. And and they'd go in and clean like these nasty things. And I'm talking about people that would have clothes that were like in their bathtub and they'd been there for like a month. And they're moldy and nasty. They got food all over the place, cats and all that have like like just went to the bathroom and they just live in that regularly. But they probably isolated themselves to like one ro- one room or something like that. But the, their houses are so nasty. And then these ladies would go in there and they'd open up the kitchen cabinet, and every one of their soup cans, the label was facing out. <laughs> You're like, that person is so nasty. They got all this stuff, and yet they have one sense of OCD. That all my labels have to be sticking sticking out. Look, we all have certain things. You go and look at my desk. Don't look at it right now. That's for sure. <laughs> look at my desk in my office. You say, man, this guy is so scattered. How could he find anything in there? But you know, there's certain places of my desk that you could go to and be like, why does he care about keeping all those organized? <laughs> I think we all have a little bit of that. We all have some tendencies. Uh, my father-in-law, we said he he's OCD because he's like that. Everything's got to be labels facing out and all that stuff. And he said, I'm not OCD. I'm CDO. You got to put them in alphabetical order. See? <laughs> anyway, that's like a preacher joke right there. <laughs> so the point I wanted to make, I think everybody understands, we all have addictive nature. We all have some things in our life that we give ourselves over to. Some might have it worse than others. Some might have an actual physical problem that they can't control. I don't know. But we all need to recognize that we have it in us. We can easily fall into... Uh, temptation to be uh, to have some kind of addiction okay so the second point I want to make is this this all just follows logically and this is it this is the point I want to make addictions in and of themselves aren't wrong I don't believe somebody is wrong because they count all their steps or how many times they knocked on the door or uh, anybody have to balance it out like you know uh, you, you, you tap something with this hand you're like oh man now I got to do it with this side some people are like that I'm a little bit like that uh, to the point where my wife has pinched me before and I'm be like, now you got to do this. <laughs> it's weird, okay, but everybody has certain things that they're addicted to. But there's nothing wrong with that. That's a, you know, if you have an addiction where you're OCD, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about that. This isn't really addiction, but I, I often say that I have, a, I, I, I'm, that I'm ADD, right? Again, I have some things I think I could prove that. <laughs> I think everybody has a little bit of that in them. Sometimes they're just a little scatterbrained or whatever. Some people are worse than others. And uh, But you know what? Here's what I think. Some of that's personality, and God's going to use it however he wants to use it for his good, right? As long as it's not hurting any, <laughs> it's not hurting anybody. It's, there's nothing wrong with ha- being a, having an addiction, Right? There's nothing wrong with wanting to learn. You know, I'll tell you somebody else who I think has some addictive uh, behaviors. It's Pastor Anderson. I mean, nobody says, I just want to learn Greek. So I'm going to go memorize the, <laughs> you know, I'm going to read the Greek Bible and I'm going to go. He likes studying, right? And he gets himself, and I've heard even people say, like, he's just, he, you know, when he gets his mind on making something or doing something, he's very addictive. So what is somebody going to say, oh, look, that's an addiction. That's bad. No, uh, having an addiction in and of itself isn't bad. Sometimes God can use that to be good. Some people uh, are called workaholics. You ever heard of somebody? Man, that guy's just a workaholic, right? He's addicted to work. All he wants to do is just, hey, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Six days labor, you know, and on the seventh day, take a rest. Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all thy might, right? That's what Solomon said. Now, I know Solomon did some bad things <laughs> and with all of his might. That's not what we're talking about. But addictions in and of themselves aren't that bad. Look, I don't really care if you, you know, pull your eyebrows. (laughs) I don't really care if you smell. Now, I don't recommend you go around smelling people's hair because that's creepy. But (laughs) but I don't really care if you have some of those things as long as uh, what you're doing isn't causing harm to you or your testimony or to somebody else. See, this is where we start thinking, okay, it's not just the fact that I, what can I do, uh, Brother Rocky, about, about addictions, right? What can I do? How can I stop doing? Well, look, everybody's going to have addictions. There's going to be something in your life that you're addicted to. That's just the way it goes. We just have to analyze, is this addiction bad for you? 
Now, here, let me just make the next logical point here. If something is bad for you, forget addiction. Don't do it at all. <laughs> you know, it's okay to drink as long as you don't get drunk. Why would you want to drink even one drink of alcohol that could make you drunk? I mean, what good does it do for you? Well, the doctor said, if I have a sip of wine every night before I go to bed, look, just stay away from it. Amen. Don't worry about like... What, what do I do, brother? I get about addiction. I'm addicted to alcohol. Well, stop drinking. <laughs> what do I do about tobacco? I'm addicted to it. Well, just stop it. It's bad for you. Don't do it. <laughs> right? Now, we need to analyze whether or not there's another addiction that you have. Is that causing any problems or whatever? You know, you're, you're spending too much time to do that. You're neglecting your family or there's some other things that you could talk about. Hey, it's not necessarily a bad addiction, but we need to address you know, why you're doing it or whatever. But look, if it's a bad thing to do, if it's sin, don't do it. I'm not going to tell you how to wean yourself from it. I have no secret tricks. If anybody smokes, so I did hear one really cool trick, buy yourself some uh, uh, firecrackers. Keep those firecrackers in your pocket. So if you ever want to smoke, you just pull out one of the firecrackers, light that up, and you won't ever smoke again. <laughs> you won't be able to talk and you won't have any teeth either, but... <laughs> But my point on that is just, look, I can't tell somebody how to quit smoking. I've never done it before. I can't tell somebody how to quit drinking. You know, I've had other addictions that I don't need to share with you. Maybe I can help somebody with some tips on overcoming that or whatever. But the bottom line is this. Everybody has addictions, and you have to decide for yourself if that's a, something that you need to quit doing or not quit doing. And if you need to quit doing it, just quit. <laughs> it's really hard to, t you know. Now, Again, I know there's some medical conditions, there's other, there's other factors, but look, that's something that a person individually is going to have to come to terms with, uh, whether or not uh, what they're doing is important to them or not. Now, somewhere in our culture, we get this idea. Again, I'm talking about the fact that addictions in and of themselves aren't bad for you. Somewhere in our culture, we get this idea that we can do all things as long as we do them in moderation. You ever heard that? All things in moderation. Now, I literally have heard people say, well, the Bible says all things in moderation. The Bible does not say that. <laughs> you can't find that in the Bible. That's one of those things that people have started saying, and they attribute it to the Bible, but it's not in the Bible. <laughs> all things in moderation. Really, all th I can just do whatever I want. I can kill somebody if I want to, as long as I you know, don't kill too many people. <laughs> it doesn't say that. Or the other extreme. Now, I'm glad you're a soul winner, but don't be a hyper soul winner. All things in moderation. You don't see that in the Bible, <laughs> right? So they've actually said, well, look at Philippians 4. This is what we read earlier. I've literally had people say this too. I don't think that they said it was in the Bible, but they may as well have believed it was in the Bible. And they said, hey, don't be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. <laughs> don't be so heavenly minded that you're not earthly good. And what they're saying is people that are just constantly thinking about the Lord and wanting to read their Bible, wanting to sing hymns and wanting to do, go soul winning and all that. They're like, well, yeah, but you can't interact with all these people. You got to come down to earth and you got to know how to be. So what you're basically, they're using the same argument. People say, you know, when you tell them you, you don't send your kids to public school, you're like, no, 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 I don't think my kids need to go to public school. I've heard people say, well, how is the world going to know what a Christian is supposed to look like if you don't send your kid to public school? <laughs> so you're saying that my kid, I need to sign them up to be a missionary at the public school, even though <laughs> they have no training, they have no experience in life. It's just ridiculous philosophies that are out there. And they're just like, uh, you know, uh, that people just have these kind of weird things. Okay, so what they do is they go to Philippians 4, 5. And he says, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. And they make that mean, hey, all things in moderation. Let everyone know your moderation. <laughs> well, that's not even what that verse is talking about. <clears throat> we should be somebody who controls ourselves and can be able to make ourselves stop doing something, right? Here's what the Bible calls it, a sober mind. We should be sober. We shouldn't allow anything to get us to the point where we can't actually stop and rationalize, hey, what is godly? What does the Bible say? You know, and this is why we don't drink. Be not drunk with wine, where is an excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit, right? He's literally saying, you know, you don't drink because when you drink, you can't even control your mind. Yep. 
right? We're supposed to keep our body in subjection, and we're not going to be uh, opening ourselves up for false doctrine and for all kinds of wickedness. You know, I, I, I believe this. You ever studied any uh, it, what the Bible says about demon possession, and you see people who are demon possessed, and you see their behavior? And I've heard people say, man, that, that looks exactly like somebody who's on drugs today. Yep. And if they're on drugs, they do those same behaviors. And I'm thinking, well, guess what? Maybe a lot of people who are on drugs are demon-possessed. Now, here's what I think. Hear me out. Now, I believe, I believe if you're saved, you're filled with the Holy Ghost, and, you know, Satan can't uh, possess you, or a demon can't possess you, okay, if you're filled with the Holy Ghost. And I'll, pre use that, I'll preach that on another day, maybe. But I believe a lot of people who are not saved, when they allow themselves to be under the influence of a substance, right, drunk, high, uh, smoking, you know, different things or whatever, they open themselves up to a place where they have no sobriety, they can't think for themselves, and guess what? They just open themselves up right for the demons to, to enter in. Now, if you're a Christian, you thankfully you got the Holy Ghost in there. I don't think the devil, the, the a demon could can possess a Christian. Someone who's not a Christian, man, you just open yourself up, right? So, it makes taking the factor of Christianity out of there, man, why would you want to allow yourself to be under the influence? You don't know what somebody's going to do to you. You know, you're going to wake up, where's all my money, where's everything? You know, this is what people do every day of their life, that they get high or they get drunk or something, and then they wake up, hey, somebody took advantage of me. The Bible talks about that too. You know, you give somebody to drink, and then you wake up and don't know how they abused you or whatever. And so, look, we need to be sober-minded. But it's not just those kind of substances that can control us to where we, we're, we're not sober-minded. It can be giving, our, uh, giving ourselves over to any kind of lust of the flesh or something. We can get to the point where we've given, over, given ourselves so much, we've devoted ourselves to a certain thing that we are not doing anything for the Lord like we ought to. Okay, and so, uh, so we've got to be real careful about that. But uh, this idea of... of uh, you know, all things in moderation, you don't, you don't see that in the Bible. Here, here's, where the, here's where that thing, that thought came from. This is from encyclopedia.com. It says, moderation in all things, a proverbial uh, saying, uh, mid-19th century, a more recent formulation of the idea contained in there is, mu uh, there is measure in all things. The essential thought is found in the work of Greek poet uh, Hesiod, 700 B.C. And here's what he said. Observe due measure, moderation is best in all things. And of the Roman comic uh, dr dramatist Plautus, 250 through uh, 185 uh, B.C. He said, moderation in all things is the best policy. So you get a pagan Greek and a pagan Roman who says, hey, in all things you do, moderation is key. And then, then some Christians say, hey, moderation in all things, just like the Bible says. No, that's Greek and Roman, you know, pagans that are saying this kind of thing. A similar misnomer that's out there is this. I already mentioned, don't be so heavenly minded that you're not of any good. Now, I can think of some cases where somebody could, for instance, go to a monastery and say, I'm just going to become a monk and I'm going to sit in there and all I'm going to do is read the Bible and study. And they're not going out there to win souls and they're not going out there and letting their light so shine before men and all this kind of stuff, but they're just locking themselves in a monastery. Well, then, yeah, I can make that application and say uh, that that's wrong. But for the most part, uh, that's not uh, what, you know, what, what the idea is. So, so then what's the secret? What's the secret? You say, well, everybody's got addictions. Okay, they're not necessarily bad, but they could be bad. Here's the secret. Pretty simple, ready? First, right, before, any, before you develop any of these habits or whatever, first give yourself to the Lord, and you will be addicted to the right things. Your focus has to be on what's God's will. How can I serve the Lord? How can I do what's pleasing to God? And if your focus is there and your heart's there, you can weed out the addictions pretty easily. You know, I know that I'm not supposed to be addicted to that, so I need to stop. I know that's hurting my testimony for the cause of Christ, so I need to stop. I know that that's stopping me from being able to do whatever. 
And so I need to stop it. But look, there are other addictions that are good addictions that we're going to do for the Lord. Why? Because of our, our uh, motivation. Okay, so <clears throat> let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Man, it seems kind of late now, but I'm so thirsty. Can somebody grab me a water bottle? Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. 2 Corinthians. Eight verse five. <clears throat> so let's just start with verse one, actually. So Paul's writing to the Corinth here, and uh, and he's talking about those in Macedonia. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affi affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that, they, that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministry to the saints. And this they did, not as we hope, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. So he's saying that, the first thing that they did was gave themselves entirely to the Lord. So now they're addicted to the ministry. Like uh, 1 Corinthians, go to 1 Corinthians. This is my favorite verse. I've already preached this before, but 1 Corinthians 16, verse 15. It says, I beseech you, brethren, and in parentheses, you know the house of Stephanus that is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Well, that's what's going on. In uh, 2 Corinthians, talking about the churches of Macedonia, saying that they basically addicted themselves to the, they gave themselves to God, right? And then, because they had given themselves to God, all right, God, what can I get myself addicted to? They said, well, how about the ministry of the saints? So they live in deep poverty even. I'm not saying you got to live in deep poverty, but I'm saying, look, they didn't care that they were in poverty. They didn't care that they didn't have some of their needs met. All they cared about was giving to uh, this work, you know, giving of themselves to the Lord and to what the Lord would have them to do. And other people probably looked at that and said, that's strange, man. Why are you so addicted to that? Because I gave myself to the Lord. It's my devotion. You know, we call uh, when people get together as a family or maybe you do it your own personal devotions. You know, that's what we call it, devotions. Like, what does that mean? Well, you decided to make it a habit, a habitual practice to at a certain time get together with your family or get alone by yourself with God, open up your Bible and read your Bible, and you've made it a habit, right? You've, you've devoted yourself to it. It's a devotion. And so there are lots of things in life that we can devote ourselves to and we can be given to, and one of those is the ministry of the saints. And that's only going to happen if we first give ourselves to the Lord. Look at Proverbs 23. So if you know your addiction is going to cost you something that's very important, you'd be foolish not to try to break that addiction. <clears throat> and I already mentioned covetous, covetousness, and this is the verse I want to show you on that one. Uh, Proverbs 23, verse 1. <clears throat> when thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee, and put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. Be not desirous of his dainties. I love that word. <laughs> for, their, for they are deceitful meat. So here's talking about somebody sitting before the king, and the king's got all these dainties. <laughs> he's got all the, you know, this big spread. And, you know, here he's living a simple life. And he goes before the king, and he's just like, oh, look at that. And I always think about these uh, get-rich kind of schemes, you know, uh, pyramid marketing and all that. Their advertisement is always like, hey, man, you see my house right here? You see all my cars? See my Lamborghini over there? You know, don't you want to live like that? All you got to do is sign up here, and I'll show you how you can do this. People are like, oh, man, I want the Lamborghini. I want the." He's like, no, man, if you're a man given to appetite, 
Look, I know everybody always says that's about gluttony. Well, gluttony is wrong too, but actually what he's saying is if you're given to appetite, hold a knife to your throat because that guy's going to use the, the fact that you're coveting after that and wanting to live that lifestyle, wanting to do that. He's going to use that to draw you into himself. So he's saying, hey, don't fall for it, you know? I've never like tried to swallow with a knife with a sharp knife next to my throat, but I imagine I wouldn't want to swallow because that cut my throat. <laughs> so he's saying, just hold that there. I mean, if you want to use that as a diet practice, go ahead. But I don't think that's what he's talking about. He's just saying, if you're given to the appetites of the flesh, yeah. forget about it, right? Don't let those dainties get to you. You know, they, uh, here's why I like the dainties. The Bible talks about, uh, here's another word the Bible uses, delicate, delicate. And you know the Bible says, I'll have to preach this on another time, but the Bible says that those who are the most delicate among you, the most delicate, right? So much that they don't even want their feet to touch the floor, right? Because they're just so delicate. And I think a dainty, right? What does that make you think? Like a, like a feminine man, right? And here's what the Bible actually says. It says, like, in a time of famine, they will eat children. <laughs> Isn't that disgusting? They will eat children. The most dainty among you or the most... Uh, uh, what did I say? Delicate among you. You say, well, that's disgusting. How could anybody do that? Well, the Bible says that there are people that are so sick that they will do that. Guess what they are? Reprobates, Amen. right? Reprobates are given over to the dainties of this world. They're delicate. Right? Why? Because they, all they care about is fulfilling the flesh. That's right. They don't care about the things of the Lord. And so God says, hey, hold a knife to your throat if you're going to be a man given over to that appetite. All right, because you want to stop yourself from doing things that are going to be destructive. Okay, so this would just be going after uh, whatever you're coveting after. Okay, so in conclusion, here here's a, some a couple points. Okay, number one, a lazy person will will call you an al uh, a workaholic. <laughs> Right? A lazy person will say, man, you need to quit working. You're a workaholic. Don't you know that's an addiction? That's a sin, right? Because they're lazy, right? So they're just, they're not concerned about their own addictions. They're just looking at your addictions and saying, hey, man, you got an addiction problem, right? Worldly people will say, hey, you're too spiritually minded to be of any earthly good, man. You need to come down to their level and learn how to be like the world and do all these kinds of things and get your head out of the clouds and whatever. Why are they saying that? Because they're worldly, yeah. right? And so uh, prideful people will say this. You need, to be, you need to stop being addicted to whatever it is you're addicted to, right? And you need to, you need to only be addicted to the things that I'm addicted to, kind of like that holier-than-thou attitude, right? Everything that everyone else is addicted to, oh, that's wicked. Just never mind the fact that they have their own addiction. So my point is everybody's got addictions. Everybody's got an addictive nature. Some might be a little worse than others, or, or they might struggle with that a little bit more because of the way that their, uh, their makeup is. I don't know. I can only speak for myself, but here's what I do know. If you give yourself to the Lord and you say, what's the will of the Lord? How can I please God? Then your addictions are going to change a little bit in nature. <laughs> And the things that you find yourself getting addicted to, you're like, hey, this is going to hinder me from being able to serve the Lord. You're going to want to get that out of your life. You're not going to be like, well, come on, a little wine is not going to hurt anybody. Look, that's going to mess you up. Yep. Look around and see, see what it's do doing to people. Losing their families, you know, basically losing their house and losing their mind, right? Why would you want to do that? Or what about your testimony? People are going to see that. You know, I was talking to Brother Eric Justin, and he led his sister to the Lord, and I'm thinking, you know, sometimes people have a hard time leading their family to the Lord because they're like, man, I've seen your past. I know how you live, and, uh, and, and, and why do I need what you have? You know, we're the same. No, but if your family starts saying, hey, this is a person who has just cleaned up their life, they've got right with the Lord, they're serving the Lord, they're wanting to, to do things for God, then all of a sudden, whenever you start talking about the gospel, they're just kind of like, well, one thing's for sure. He knows what he's talking about. Like it's, it's, he's, he's serious about this. It's really gotten a hold of him. Well, that's what happens when you give yourself to the Lord. Your addictions and your habits and your passions, your desires totally change. Now, I'm not saying they have to do that for you to be saved, but I'm saying that not everyone that's saved has wholly given themselves to the Lord. So we need to wholly give ourselves to the Lord so that we can deal with the addictions, right? Now, again, we all have addictions, but the person that asked me to preach this message, I know what he's saying is, man, I'm really struggling with addiction. I'm really, give me this magic formula to stop with this addiction. 
Well, if you totally give yourself to the Lord, first of all, you would have been here to hear the message probably. <laughs> But they're not totally giving their stuff to the Lord. They just want to quick, get fix, uh, a quick fix. Help, this, help me get this out of my life because I know it's bad for me. Well, you got to do that yourself. I can't do it for you. But you got to wholly give yourself to the Lord first. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. None of us perfect. We all uh, certainly have addictions in our lives that we need to get out. And we certainly have things uh, 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 that we need to be more addicted to. And I just pray, Lord, that you help us realize that our, our priority in this when it comes to addictions and addictive behaviors is that our desire would be for you and for your will and to accomplish the work that you've called us to do. And Lord, help us not worry about what other people think our addictions are or let us not worry about what their addictions are, but let us just focus on what you have for our lives. And I pray that you will help us be addicted to the right things that are going to help us and they're going to help us. Uh, uh, further the gospel and uh, the work of the Lord, and that we would get those things out of our lives that would hinder us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.